Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. I will be releasing a series of videos on options trading and I can assure you that the content will be really easy to understand because I am a beginner myself. So I probably can't go too complicated. Basically, I put myself into where I was about one year ago where I first started options trading and listed down the questions that I asked as a newbie. With all the questions still relatively fresh in my mind, I came up with this content which I hope would be helpful and useful for real beginners. Meanwhile, a quick shout out to ChatGPT as it has assisted me to generate some of the content. So yep, if you don't mind a beginner sharing his experience and limited knowledge, or if you are okay for us to learn together as we progress along the way, then watch on to find out more. Alright, in this particular video, I am going back to the very basics as I will cover what's an option, the types of option, some key terms and concepts. I will also use a different yet simple analogy to explain options trading. And there are even questions at the end of the video to test your knowledge. And oh, I will go a little slower so that you will be able to follow. Okay, first up, what are options? Based on definition, options are financial contracts that give the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specified price, aka strike price, on or before a specified date, aka expiration date. Very mouthful, right? Are you confused already? <laughs> okay, it's okay. Just need to know there are two main types of options, call and put options. You will figure out the rest later as we progress along, so don't worry, yeah? Basically, call options give the buyer the right to buy the underlying asset at the strike price, while put options give the buyer the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price. The underlying asset can be a stock, an index, a bond, or a currency, among many other things. The buyer of an option is also known as the holder and the seller of an option can be known as the writer. So let's talk about the purpose of options trading. Options are traded on various exchanges and can be used for a variety of purposes, such as hedge against potential losses in one's investments portfolio, income generation, or purely speculation on price movements, just to name a few. Before I move on, thought to highlight that though options provide investors and traders with a wide range of opportunities to manage risks and capitalize on price movements in the underlying assets, option trading can be complex and carries a high level of risk. So it is very important for investors to have a good understanding of the options market and the strategies they are using before they start trading. So do remember that. Alright, let's now understand some basic but important terms and concepts of options. First, let's recap what is underlying asset. As mentioned earlier, it is the asset that an option contract gives the buyer the right to buy or sell. This can be a stock, commodity, currency, or index, among others. For this video, I will focus only on stock. Let's now find out what are call and put options as I bet you have heard this many times from different traders. So basically, a call option is a contract that gives the buyer the right to buy the stock at the strike price on or before the expiration date. A put option is the opposite. It gives the buyer the right to sell the stock at the strike price on or before the expiration date. To make it easier to understand, remember this. If you buy a call contract, you can buy the stock at a price you want. If you buy the put contract, you can sell the stock at a price you want. Here is another way to look at put and call options. If you buy a call option, you will want the stock price to go up. If you buy the put option, you will want the stock price to go down. Moving on, let's talk about expiration date. It is the date on which an option contract expires. After the expiration date, the option can no longer be exercised as the option contract has been voided. And then we have the strike price. The strike price is the price at which the buyer of a call option can purchase the stock, or the price at which the buyer of a put option can sell the stock. The next key term to learn is premium. In the real world, when we make a transaction, or rather when we buy or sell something, there will be money involved, right? This is the same in the option world. The money involved is called premium. If you are a buyer of an option contract, 
this premium is the price that you pay to the seller. On the flip side, if you are a seller of an option contract, then this is the price that you would receive from the buyer. Well, basically, premium is just a fancy term for price or money. Okay, now we will learn three popular terms that you usually hear from traders. In the money, out of the money, and at the money. An option is in the money if it has intrinsic value. In case you wonder what is intrinsic value, let's save it for later. But just for this in the money option, it just means the following. For a call option, it is in the money if the underlying asset price is above the strike price. For a put option, it is considered in the money if the underlying asset price is below the strike price. Next, out of the money options. An option is out of the money if it has no intrinsic value. Here's a simple explanation. For a call option, it is out of the money if the underlying asset price is below the strike price. For a put option, it is out of the money if the underlying asset price is above the strike price. Finally, an option is at the money if the strike price is equal to the underlying asset price or stock price. It is okay if you are a little confused. Let's now take a look at a simple example and apply what we have just learned. So let's say you bought a call option for a stock at $100 strike price, expiring 1st December 2023. Come 1st December, if the stock price pushes above your $100 strike price, for instance, $105, then we can say the call option contract that you bought is in the money. On the other hand, if the price falls below $100, it can be $98, $97, $90, etc. As long as it's below $100, it is called out of the money. But if the stock price closes at $100, it will be considered as at the money. Okay, now let's tweak the example a little bit. Instead of call option, now you decided to buy a put option. Strike price is still $100, and expiration date is the same as well. So come 1st December 2023, if the stock price goes above the $100 strike price, that is called out of the money. If it falls below your $100 strike price, then the put option is in the money. Once again, if it closes at $100, that's at the money. So far so good, feel free to pause the video if necessary to digest what we have just covered in terms of the key concepts and terms. Do remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you think the content is useful so far. Meanwhile, quick information and sharing. One option contract controls or represents 100 shares. So earlier on, when we talk about premium, let's say you would like to purchase an option contract for $3 premium, you will be paying $3 times 100, which is $300. This is why a lot of times, you do see options premium at less than a dollar. Example, 50 cents. Looks cheap, right? It actually means $50. Alright, moving on, let's talk about intrinsic and extrinsic values. But before that, I need to bring back the term premium, aka price. Premium typically consists of two main components, and they are intrinsic and extrinsic values. So, the intrinsic value of an option is the amount by which the option is in the money. Don't understand? Okay, let me give you a simple example. For instance, you bought a call option last week with $95 strike price. The stock is currently trading at $100. In this scenario, the intrinsic value of the option is $100 minus $95, which equals to $5. Next, extrinsic value, also known as time value, is the portion of an option's price that is not intrinsic value. Using back the same example, you bought a call option with a strike price of $95, the stock is trading at $100. But earlier on, did I tell you how much did you buy the contract for? Nope, I didn't. So let's say the premium or price that you paid for was $8. So in this case, you subtract the intrinsic value of $5 away from $8, you get $3. And this is your extrinsic value, aka time value. Another example, same stock, same current market price, which is $100. And you decide to buy a call option of say $110 strike price because you believe the share price will continue to go up. 
the premium that you paid for is $6. In this case, the current trading price $100 is below your strike price of $110. Therefore, the option is out of the money. Do you remember we covered what is out of the money earlier on? I hope you do. Anyway, with this, the intrinsic value is therefore zero. Once again, recap, only in the money options have intrinsic value. So whatever premium or price that you pay for, for this particular example, $6, they are all time value, aka extrinsic value. Lastly, in case you wonder how extrinsic value is being calculated, the simple explanation is that it takes into account the time remaining until the expiration date, the volatility of the underlying asset or stock, interest rates, and other factors. For a beginner, I don't think it's critical for you to know. You probably just need to know that a longer term options and higher implied volatility will result to more extrinsic value. Alright, the last key term that I think beginners should know is implied volatility which measures the volatility of a stock price. In simple terms, it is a way to estimate and measure how much the price of a stock is expected to fluctuate and move. When the implied volatility, short term IV, is high, it means the market expects the stock to be highly volatile. And the opposite is true. When the IV is low, then the market expects the stock to be less volatile. Typically, high IV means higher premium for the options. We can cover the implications of high IV maybe in future videos or something. So, those are just some of the key terms and concepts in options trading. There are many others, such as open interest, option Greeks, IV crash, etc. But at this point, for a beginner, I think this would suffice. Okay, if you have reached this far, good job to you. Give yourself a pat on your back. It shows that you are really keen to learn about options. And I hope the content has been useful so far. If so, do help to tap the like and subscribe buttons. Meanwhile, take a short break if you have to before we carry on with the second half of the video. And if you don't mind, just a short commercial from me. Okay, this channel needs your support. This can be done by simply tapping on the like button so that YouTube can push this video to more audience. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you have not. Next, you can also sign up for any of the brokerage accounts or other stuff using my referral links below. Finally, you may also consider buying me a coffee which will cost you USD $3. All the links can be found in the description or comment section below. Thank you for your support. Alright, back to business. Quick recap, there are two main types of options. Call options and put options. A call option gives the buyer the right to buy the underlying asset at the strike price, while a put option gives the buyer the right to sell the underlying asset at the strike price. So, if you think the price of a stock will go up, you can buy a call option on that stock. Don't forget, each option contract has a strike price and expiration date. So do remember to choose them. With this, you will be hoping that the price of the stock will rise above the strike price before the expiration date. Okay, let's now visit an example. For instance, XYZ stock is trading at $90. You bought a call option with a strike price of $95, with an expiration date that is one month from now. From the point of purchase to the expiration date, if the stock rises to example $100, you can do what we call exercise the contract to buy the stock at the strike price that you have chosen which is $95. Meanwhile, don't forget, the stock is trading at $100 in the stock market. In other words, you are getting the stock below the current market price. And do you remember one option contract equals to 100 shares? So meaning to say you will have 100 shares of the stock with a cost price of $95 per share. From here, you can sell 100 of these shares at market price, which is $100 and as a result, you will make $5 per share profit, which is $500 for 100 shares. Is it too complicated? Are you able to understand? If you can't, don't worry, let's take it slow. Here's a pictorial example. So, the stock is trading at $90, and you think it will rise in the near term. Therefore, you bought a call option with $95 strike price. 
the stock did not disappoint you as it went up to $100 before the expiration date. At this point, you can exercise your call option contract to buy 100 shares at a discounted price, which is your strike price of $95. With that, you can then quickly sell the shares in the open market at its current trading price of $100 and profit a total of $500 from this particular trade. Alright, can you absorb a little more? Here's another way to profit from the call option. Now let's throw in a premium or price that you paid for the option of $95 strike price. For instance, $3. And if the stock price goes up before expiration date, it can be $98, $99 or $100. The option contract will increase in value. To put it in layman's terms, the core option contract that you paid $3 for will increase in value. For instance, it may become $5. So at this point, you can sell the option contract for a profit anytime before the expiration date. If you sell it at say $5, you will then make a $2 profit which is actually $200. However, if the stock price doesn't go up, the option will expire worthless at the expiration date, meaning to say it will go to $0, and you will lose the $3 premium that you paid for the option. Alright, moving over to put options. So on the other hand, if you think the price of the stock will go down, you can buy the put option on that stock, and hope that the price of the stock will fall below the strike price before the expiration date. For instance, XYZ stock is trading at $90. You bought a put option with a strike price of $85 with an expiration date that is one month from now. From the point of purchase to the expiration date, if the stock falls to, for example, $80, you can once again exercise your right to sell the stock at the strike price that you have chosen, which is $85. In other words, you are selling the stock above the current market price. Once again, one option contract equals 100 shares. So that means you will profit $5 per share when you sell them at $85 while the stock is trading at $80. The total profit for 100 shares for this transaction will be $500. Now let's try to explain it with a pictorial example. So the stock is trading at $90 and you think that it will fall in the near term. Therefore, you bought a put option with $85 strike price. The stock moves as you have expected by going down before the expiration date. Let's say it drops to $80. At this point, you can exercise your put contract to sell 100 shares at $85, which is your strike price. And this strike price is higher than what the stock is trading in the market which is $80. As a result, you do your math, you profit a total of $500 from this trade. Just to add on, even if the stock continues to fall and fall to $50, $20 or even crashes to zero, you can still sell the 100 shares at $85 per share as per your strike price, as long as this is done before the expiration date. This is also the reason why you will hear investors or traders saying that they buy put options to protect the downside. Because even if the stock crashes to zero, the put buyer can sell their shares at the strike price that he or she has chosen. Okay, here's the final bit on put options, similar to what has been covered in the call option. There is also another way to profit from the put option without dealing with 100 shares of the stock. Once again, let's throw in a premium or price that you paid for the option of $85 strike price. Let's use $3 again as an example. If the stock price goes down before the expiration date, let's say it drops from $90 to $86, $85 or even $80, the option contract will increase in value. In other words, the put option contract that you paid $3 for will become more expensive in the market. For instance, it may become $5. At this junction, you can choose to sell your original option contract away before the expiration date for a profit. So let's say you sold it at $5. Then you will make $2 profit, which is $200 in total. This is what we term it as closing the contract. However, if the stock price doesn't go down or just goes sideways, the option value will drop 
and will eventually expire worthless at the expiration date. In other words, fall to zero. This means that you will lose the $3 premium that you paid for this put contract at the very start. Alright, so earlier on we have been talking about buying call and put options. Do you know that instead of buying, you can write or sell them as well? Write is again just a fancy word for sell. By doing so, you will be going against the buyers which I have described earlier on. In other words, whatever outcome the buyer wants to have, you would want the opposite result. For instance, remember the buyer of the call option will want the stock price to fly past the strike price before expiration date. So if you are a seller who sells him or her this call option, you want the opposite outcome, which means you do not want the stock to go to the moon or fly past above the stipulated strike price before expiration date. Even if it stays sideways, you will profit. Likewise, if you sell a put option, you will bet against the put buyer. Remember, the put buyer wants the price to go down. Therefore, you as a seller, you want the price to maintain or go up, or at the very least, not fall below the strike price that the buyer has bought. Don't worry if you can't understand what I have just shared, as I will be releasing another video to explain a little more on buying and selling options. Meanwhile, I hope the content of this video has been useful so far. If it is, could you kindly comment below so that I know it is indeed useful in helping beginners to understand options trading. Alright, it's another break time, so feel free to pause this video if needed. Otherwise, we will move on to the final segment of this video. Alright, the final segment of this video is try to use an analogy to explain option trading. There are a lot of people who like to use the purchase of insurance as an example to explain. But for me, I prefer using the casino analogy to explain options trading. But at the end of the video, if you still prefer me to use the insurance analogy to explain options trading, do let me know in the comment section below. Okay, as much as I do not want to see options trading as a form of gambling, it is still a probability game, and there are still some form of guessing, betting, predicting, and luck involved, which is very similar to what is happening in a casino. Just imagine you are one of the many players in a casino. There are many different games where you can place bets and potentially win money. You can choose a game or table that you are interested in, and you place a bet. Similarly, in options trading, there are so many stocks out there. You can choose one or a few stocks that interest you, and you place bets by entering into contracts called options. This involves making bets on the price movement of a stock or stocks within a certain time frame via either a call option or a put option. As a recap, buying a call option is like placing a bet that the stock price will go up. It's similar to betting on a specific number or color on a roulette wheel. If the stock closes above your selected strike price within a certain time frame as you predicted, you win the bet and make a profit. However, if the stock price doesn't go up or it goes down, you lose the bet, and the money you place as a bet is gone. On the other hand, buying a put option is like placing a bet that the stock price will go down. It is similar to betting against the dealer's hand in a card game. If the stock price closes below your selected strike price within a certain time frame as you predicted, you win the bet and make a profit. But if the stock price doesn't go down or if it goes up, you lose the bet and the money you place as a bet is lost. Alright, now let's flip the table around. Instead of imagining yourself as the player, now imagine you being the house or the dealer of the casino. This is where the role will reverse. You being the dealer, you sell options instead of buying them. So in the case of a call option, you sell it to a player who bets that the stock will rise to a certain strike price at a certain time frame. If the stock doesn't go up or if it goes down, you as the banker will win his or her bet. On the other hand, someone places a bet that the stock price will go down, aka he or she buys a put option from you. If the stock price doesn't go down or if it goes up, the player will lose the money, while you as the dealer will win the bet. We all know that the house or casino usually wins. This is why I always prefer to write or sell options, both calls and puts, instead of buying them, because the probability of winning is higher. 
But of course, I would like to highlight that in options trading's context, the win rate of an option seller is definitely not as high as the real casino. Anyway, all in all, just like in a casino, when you trade options, there are risks involved. If you make the wrong prediction, you can lose all the money you have invested in the options contract. Therefore, it is important to note that option trading requires knowledge of option itself, understanding of the market, and risk management. Just as successful professional gamblers require skill, strategy, and discipline. To add on to this, I would like to caution that a lot of people lose money in options trading. It is very difficult to be profitable consistently without equipping yourself with sufficient knowledge and understanding of options, the stock market, and the macro environment. Just like not everyone can step out of the casino winning most of the times, and not everyone can be a professional gambler. And in options trading's context, not everyone can be a profitable options trader in the long term. Options trading can be complex and carries a high level of risk. So please, please, investors, do have a good understanding of the options market and strategies that you are using before you start trading. Okay, before we end this video, here are some questions to test your knowledge. Feel free to pause the video to attempt some of these questions. Finally, to sum this video up, I would like to say again, please, please approach option trading with caution. Alright, I hope this video has been useful in helping you to understand the basics of options. Let me know if anyone prefers me to use the insurance analogy to explain options trading. I can consider doing one video on that. Meanwhile, more content on options trading will be coming up, so do like and subscribe and keep a lookout for more videos. With that, I will see you in the next one. Thank you.